Good morning. This morning's message I entitled, Casting Doubt on Who Jesus Was. And take your Bibles and please turn with me to John chapter 20, verse number 30. John chapter 20, verse number 30. And it says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. So to who this is written to, Israel, they were to believe he was the chosen one, the Messiah. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Lord and Savior. We thank you that he did walk the earth. Today we'll study a little bit about that. And we know that today, believing that you are the Christ does not save. Believing that you died for our sins does. Let us know the distinction. In the Lord's name we pray. Amen. So if you lived in the time of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you're looking back to 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 23. Just let me read you. It is David had a son. His name was Solomon. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom in all the earth. How much of the earth it says? All the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God has put in his heart. So when you were growing up as a Jew, living under God's covenant, you were looking forward to returning to that seat of power on the earth, where all the kings of the earth would come and hear your wisdom. And they're looking for the Christ, the Redeemer, that's going to return them to their status. I find it fascinating. How do you know about heaven? Paul, how do you know about what was the Israel's hope? It wasn't heaven. It was being resurrected and walking in to that kingdom on the earth. Daniel 2.44 says the goal of prophecy is to establish a kingdom on the earth. Isaiah 9, 7 said it's going to be David's throne and there will be no end. In Ephesians, it talk ages upon ages upon ages. It will grow an earthly kingdom and we're, we're part of the heavenly kingdom. Isaiah 35, 5 says, Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart, and the tongue of the dumb, so dumb sing, for in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. This is a passage that's talking about when this Messiah comes to the earth. Now we all know about the three wise men, right? What did they know? They knew when he was to show up. What did King Harold, when all, all this ruckus was about this little baby, he sought the scribes and the Pharisees of Israel wondering what is going on. And they said, where is this child born? And they got that right. They said Bethlehem. So when he was to show up, when he was to show up, it's no secret. If you were even a remote Bible believer, you knew what? When he was to show up. Now then, we also, I read to you Isaiah 35, 5 and 6. When he shows up, what does it say? The blind shall be, their eyes shall be open. The deaf will be able to hear. The lame will be able to walk. The earth will be healed when he shows up. So isn't it funny when Jesus Christ walks the earth, just like we read in John, what happens? He healed the sick, right? And why? They were to believe he was the Messiah. He had how many disciples? Twelve. And he told them in Matthew chapter 11, now uh, he, he told them, um, in Mark chapter 3, and he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and have the power to heal sickness. So you have Jesus Christ healing the sick. 
I believe there's about five verses that whoever he brought to them, he healed them all. All. No exceptions. But uh, uh, the disciples also had that power. He ordained the twelve that they should be with him, that they might send forth to preach and have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. Same thing it says in Matthew chapter 5, verses 5 through 8, and it has one little thing. He says, don't go to the Gentiles. Gentiles aren't looking for a Messiah to return him to power on the earth, sitting on David's throne. So they knew the time, and now what's happening? There are miracles abounding. And then according to John, these things are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ. So, we have prophecies. There are three verses that said you must look at the prophecies, and I like the one where we choose here in Matthew chapter 11. It says, Now when John heard, was in prison and he heard of the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? And I remember like a decade ago, I was so mad at the scriptures. I said, why doesn't he just say yes? It drove me nuts. It absolutely said, just say yes. I was in some battle on some message person that says, well, Jesus never claimed he was the Christ. Well, if I had a little more study and a little more knowledge, I would have understood why the Lord said, Jesus answered and said unto him, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame will walk, and the, leap, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. So what's in to John? You know the scriptures. Are these things being fulfilled or not? And what would you answer? Yes, he is the Christ. So, who, else, who are we missing from this equation? If you were Satan, you know the time too, and you want to prevent that from happening, what would you do? How, how much leaven does it take to leaven the whole lump? Just a little bit. And we're going to read about a little bit of leaven here. I want you to take your Bibles and turn with me to Mark. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. So, in your Bible, there is demonic activity, familiar spirits. And if you could graph where they occur, just a little bit in the Old Testament, we had talked a few weeks ago about Saul raising one up, someone with familiar spirit. A whole lot of them in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and just a few in the book of Acts. In fact, we don't read about any after Acts chapter 16, about anyone like that. So, you kind of think, wish uh, Bob was here, when do you attack your enemy? When he is weakness, or when he is sleeping when he's not ready. So this, uh, the, the wise men, the Gentiles of the world, knew when Christ was showing up. Even the king asked, when does the king show up? Where was he born? And they have that right. They should have known that this was him. How did they identify him? By the signs and wonders. It says that in Psalm 40, verse 7, Lo, I come, and the volume of this book is written of me. Revelations 19.10 says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. In Luke 24.44, all things must be fulfilled which were written in the laws of Moses and of the prophets and of the Psalms concerning me, the Lord Jesus Christ. Prophecies, what the Old Testament said and what the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled. I was on the internet, and it must be true if it's on the internet, but this guy had 351 prophecies. He identified verse, he identified the Old Testament verse and what was fulfilled, and he goes, this is old 
351. This is old. I've discovered a lot more. So he had, in writing, I could go back, I can look myself, which prophecies are fulfilled. And it, it's absolutely amazing. And a while ago, we did a study. If just eight were fulfilled, time, distance, and what happened, you could uh, put a uh, three, what was it, three feet of silver dollars and one gold one in the whole mess, and a blind man would have to walk, reach down, and pick up the right one. That's the odds of that happening for just eight, 351. You want to just look at the mathematic probability of fulfilling close to 400, and there might be more. It, it, it is, you can't measure that. Jesus was the Christ. So, what would you do if you're Satan? Satan always opposes God. You know when he's going to show up, and you know what he's supposed to do. You're going to try to stop that. I ask you to turn to the book of Mark. Let's look at Mark chapter 9, and let's start reading in verse 14. Mark chapter 9, verse 14. They're coming down as a background from the transfiguration. And that, that's an interesting thing with Peter when he looks back in, uh, in uh, first or second Peter, he looks back at that event. He says, there's a sh I was, a I, I saw with my eyes, I saw with my, I heard with my ears, but there's something more sure than my eyewitness account. And it was prophecy. And we have this. But, but, but that's what's going on. They're coming down. They're coming down from the transfiguration. And it says in verse 4, and he took Peter, James, and John with him. So there's four. The rest of the disciples are down here with the multitude. Mark chapter 9, verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him and saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What questions ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have bought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. So what, so what is going on? He can't what? Talk. And who, whosoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and he gnashed with his teeth, and pinneth away. And I spake to thy disciples, and they should cast him out, and they could not. Huh. We just read that they're given power to heal they walk, and to cast out devils. They come to this particular child boy. They can't do it. They cannot do it. We'll, we'll read about that. Why cannot they do it? He answered them in verse 19 and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. So what do we have? The Lord Jesus Christ, a little frustrated with the multitude. They're not getting with the program. They're there to what? Get fed or get healed. Not understanding who he is. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw them straightway, the spirit, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and, wall, and wallowed, foaming. Sound, sounds sort of like an epileptic fit, if you ever witnessed one of those. And he asked his father, how long, he asked his father, so the Lord is asking the boy's father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oftentimes it casted him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. So what do, what do we know here? The disciples could not cast out that demon. A little leaven leavened the whole uh, lump. If you're Satan and your message is like we read in Isaiah, that he could heal the sick, he could cast out demons, what, what's going to happen to your faith in him? 
Is 99.9% good enough, or does the Messiah have to be 100%? What's Satan plan? If it was me, and I wanted to stop him, what would I do? I'd make sure he couldn't heal everyone. I'd make sure he would try to cast as much doubt as he could into the people. And for whatever reason, whatever spirit went into that child or boy, the disciples couldn't cast him out. Then the Lord and the Father, if you can't do it, have compassion on us. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. And then this, this next four words are very interesting. I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. And that is just like us. They tell the story of uh, the um, Christians meeting underground in Russia, and if you owned a Bible, held the Bible study, immediate death. And the Russian soldiers stormed the church, denounced the name of Jesus Christ, or stand here and be shot. All about a handful of the people scattered away. When I first got saved, if someone was coming out with a gun and gave me the opportunity to hit the door, where would I have been? <laughs> Could be out of here, right? Now, as you stand, you know, the faith that saves you, a little tiny faith, right? Just a little bit of faith. But... When you read Ephesians chapter 6 and you look at all those things that the believer is to put on against the wiles of the devil, it's, it's a process where your faith gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And it's just like this. Um, if thou, can, if thou, thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Well, what about the disciples? They couldn't cast him out. But isn't it funny when he said he was going to be, be, he was going to be handed over to the Romans and be crucified and die and rise again the third day? How did the disciples take that news? How, what did Peter do? He essentially said, "I'm fair for it. Over my dead body, that's going to happen to you, right?" They didn't understand all things. They didn't understand all things, and Satan's trying to stop them here. He put a charge, battle of the bulge. I am not letting this kid, be, this demon, be passed out by a bunch of men just because Christ gave him the power. Christ is going to cast this demon out. He's going to have to do it himself. There is not a single instance in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that the Lord Jesus Christ didn't heal someone. And when Jesus saw that people, uh, the people coming, running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto them, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him, that he was as one dead. And as much that many said, He is dead. Can't have that happen. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, and when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him how? Privately. Why could we not cast him out? And that's a good logical question. He said we could, but we couldn't. And he said unto them, This kind of can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. And when I was in the arena of trying to get a daughter healed, and I went to that faith healer, and nothing worked, and I listened to him on TV, and he said the ex uh, exact same thing, now you have to pray and fast. 
didn't work. And the blame was on me. I think the faith healers are one of the most evil people that walk the earth today. It's not going on today. Why is it, why are these people possessed by demons? Satan has a bigger plan than you and your sick kid. He was there to prevent the people from believing in the Messiah. Did eventually the people believe in the Messiah? No! They handed them over to Romans to be crucified. No one stood with them. Satan thought he had them, says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Had he known it, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, he would not have crucified him. And guess what? What would happen if he wasn't crucified? Well, he, he had no sin in him. He would have lived forever. He could have paid for the sins. It's amazing stuff how accurate the scripture appears. So, my uh, let's close. My point was, there are people that are deaf and dumb walking the earth. The disciples could heal them. Demon possessed people, they could cast them out for the most part, but they couldn't. They were there to show, they were there to prevent the people from believing he was the Christ. Point number two, you see most demon possessions in your Bible in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, a spattering in the um, old, so called Old Testament and a little bit in the book of Acts, and then it just stops. Point number three is, if you wanted to cast doubt on, believe, on people believing you are the Christ, you would, you would show that you could not heal every person. You had to have 100% batting average. 100%. Can't, could not be any doubt that he was the Christ. And again, why was there so much demon possessions in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? The devil knew that this was his last stand. He did not understand the rising up of the Apostle Paul, and he threw everything he had to prevent the people from believing that Jesus was the Christ. And we'll pick up more of that next week.